just because we have you here, get your take, I guess, on Tchaikovsky 6th that mm. you have coming up in Florida. Because it's such an, in my opinion, introspective. I mean, those outer movements are all, boy, he's really... He's really agonized. I yeah. mean, so the piece at its very core is a rather explicit narrative about the nature and cost of forbidden love. Mm. So from the very dark ruminating beginning with those fifths in the base and, and, the, and this pondering um, bassoon, almost like someone holding their head on a, on their desk as if they're approaching the end of their life, and that furtive da, 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 given to divided violas. Mm -hmm. Again, there's a sense of division straight away. Then we enter into that wonderful sort of D major section where you feel like it's um, ba, 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 da, da, da. Yeah. This is Arcadia. This is the idea of of two lovers together in in bliss. And then as the movement progresses, it comes back more impassioned and always the melody is da, 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 it's always in stepwise motion. Yeah. Then there is, of course, the development section in which we go into the, the most dangerous passage in which you feel it being ripped asunder. Yeah. In this section of music, he has melodies that go like di, da, di, da, which is the cross, mm. the Christian cross. Mm -hmm. di, as in sort of dun 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 dun, you know, you know right? Catholic cross, um, and and so therefore the music has now a very dangerous, judgmental quality, and you hear almost like an oracle of doom when the trombones come in, that ecclesiastical voice of of judgment, forcing this destruction upon them, and then the bass is absolutely agonized on these low F sharps as the piece builds into the tr great ripping climax. Yeah. Then as the music comes back afterwards, it is fractured. So at the end of the end of the first movement, we have a moment after the trombone chorale. Again, always the trombones are mm. the are the switch in which things happen. We sort of end marching forward, but it feels like something has really been damaged. The yeah. ending of the first movement is not peaceful. You feel like it's almost, if not catatonic, there is something shocked. Mm -hmm. Like you can almost see Mount Doom ahead of you, right. if you're Frodo or Gollum or whomever. And the second movement is this extraordinary waltz but why yeah. five and also the fact it's not it's not one two three one two but it's da 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 da, da. and again stepwise motion mm. same right. melody that you heard in the first movement in the in the majority section the major section but this time now it sort of comes upwards yearning moving forwards but this sort of one two one two dun, dee, dun, da. and it almost feels like you're it's the opposite of the um, Rachmaninoff Isle of the Dead, where it goes one, two, three, one, two, where you're rowing towards doom. Right. Here you're, you're yearning forward. It's a very strange kind of elliptical movement that comes from that rhythm. Uh, and then in the, in the sort of minor section in the middle, again, you feel the same language as you've heard in the first movement coming back. And so that movement ends sort of reasonably not positive but it's sort of um it's not desolate right well after the first movement it seems like a ray of sunshine it does but it's but the, but the way that it writes it's um he's not offering that completely mm. and then the third movement this sort of rather strange march that people feel is is incongruous with the rest of it but it's not and it depends of course what you understand as the forbidden love and there's a great book by timothy l jackson uh, from the cambridge music handbook series about tchaikovsky sixth symphony and he describes that actually the third movement is this sense of using military, using m male relationships. And in fact, he, he was writing that the Spartans encouraged homosexuality hmm. as a form of bonding to right. keep the men wanting to fight for each other. And this bum, bum, ba -dum, dum, ba -bum. But at the same time as you have this, da, da, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, you have da -ka -da -ka -da -ka -da -ka -da one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So you have this, these two rhythms still not quite gelling. Mm -hmm. Right. And then this sort of thing, and, and actually most of the movement is very quiet. The majority right. of it yeah. is very quiet until, of course, it gets up and it goes to the moment where it's F, 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 F. <laughs> and it's <laughs> astonishing power. And the movement ends and da, 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 and of course everyone cheers and it's huge, huge, yeah. big deal. And the conductor's goal it's is to stop that happening. Yep. And I've done it a few times where it's I have tough. stopped it. You have to hold it and then be ready to move into the next gesture. Mm -hmm. It almost has to be attacker. So as we begin the last movement, we sort of, we've gone from um, love in the first movement, clearly, but also danger and pain and all the different things into the second movement, which feels optimistic, but isn't quite. Third movement is martial, but there's still something rather threatening about mm -hmm. it. Either you're being watched or chased, or perhaps you are united in common mission. Right. And the last movement, the opening of the melody is 
split between the first and seconds. Di, a, da, di, da, di. But the first have di, and the seconds have da, and then the first have da, ah, right. di. So you're completely conjoined and united. Mm -hmm. And so the melody is not given to one person, but to two voices like this. And then, of course, as it sinks down, slowly builds up, and we come to one of the great climaxes, where you just feel that this just the whole is like a giant crack is opening in the relationship, but also in the world, as if that the, the pure love is going to go forever. After that moment, when the melody comes back, it's then given to the first on their own. Hmm. Now they're separated. They're, so, yeah. they're separated. They are torn apart and then you have the trombones giving the final judgment before mm -hmm. boom, 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 boom. and then de, de, da, da. always a stepwise motion and what was in the second movement da, 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 de, da, right. da, de. and the triplet da, 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 you hear in the in the third movement going upwards now it goes down mm -hmm. all the time and what's the whole purpose of them what is the narrative that's been hidden well we understand that he was in love with his nephew bob right Vladimir. And so they believed that this was indeed a hidden, rather explicit narrative about the nation, the, the nature and notion of um, homosexual relationship, but of course, being somewhat incestuous as right. well. I mean, it's like ultimate forbidden relationships mm -hmm. and what he wanted it to be and then what he felt it was going to happen to him as a result of the sins that he believed he was committing as by being a homosexual right. man and, and then the way that he felt judged. It is, there's never been a piece of music which is so raw, open, and um, comprehensive in its sense of self-doom, but yet love. It is, there's nothing like it. I mean, I mean Stravinsky was listening to Tchaikovsky Six, the end of his life, and his wife rushed in and said, not that piece. Hmm. So for Russians, this piece is, right. it's almost like you're looking into Rasputin or something. It's like this <laughs> sort of danger to it. Um, and in concert, just is um, it is extraordinary but the the narrative of course is so much bigger than just that story it is much more about about tolerance and civility it's about yearning it's about all the all the aspects yeah. of the human condition and, and so it, there's a little bit of I've destroyed this I think in the first movement absolutely and, yeah. and guilt. I have done because we've all been there I had this thing and I've destroyed it yeah I didn't fight for it or yeah. we didn't we weren't brave enough or or maybe, or maybe there's also a sense of, of victimhood. Or what could we have done mm -hmm. yeah. against the tide of such anger yeah. and brutality? Um, but uh, as a, it's it's a contemporary story, of course, because it's not. It's much bigger than just that relationship. It is. It's about um, nationality. It's about all sorts of things. And anything in which you're fighting for what you believe is to be good, mm -hmm. and then for it to be taken away, right. it's a much more powerful message. Yeah. This reminds me of, I was at a concert at intermission and Tchaikovsky's sixth was the final piece. And a gentleman said to the, I overheard him say, this next one's good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. I mean, as a composition, it's, it's, it is good. Yeah. <laughs> it's the understatement, but is it as a, as a narrative? Um, but people don't always know that stuff about it. Right. And, and, uh, and so next, next Thursday, whatever that is, um, I think it must be the fourth or something of December 2019, I will be doing the Inside the Music in Florida, which okay. I will talk about the stuff and show mm -hmm. the examples. And then when you listen to the piece afterwards, there won't be a try high in the right. house because the ending, yeah. when you get the um bum ba, and that, of course yeah. the heartbeat slows down and then it stops. Yeah. And he believes he's in hell. I mean, he's like Don Giovanni. Mm -hmm. It is, I mean, Don, it's no different to Don Giovanni's loves and, and, and right. things.